Hello and welcome to another Honest Tick where I'll be talking about a taboo word in this hobby for some odd reason. EQ. We don't talk about EQ. No, no, no. We don't talk about EQ. But yes, EQ. And before you get your pitchforks out, if you're in the camp that you shouldn't be the one having to apply EQ on something you spent your money on, I get it. I was in the same camp as yours, but discovering EQ just opened up a lot of possibilities for me, which is why I like to share my experience with anyone who is mildly curious about it. So kindly click away if you have absolutely zero interest in EQ, but for those who have stayed, let's see what we can do. Before we proceed further, I like to advise watching my video on frequency response or any other videos about it, so it helps with understanding what I'm about to describe later in the video. Also, I'm very new to this aspect of the hobby, so if there's anything that you guys have found that could help benefit me or any other people, kindly share your thoughts in the comment section down below. With that all said, please keep an open mind and let's first talk about when or why you would ever need EQ. I believe EQ is suitable for these two reasons. One is when you are curious about how an IM or headphone sounds or could sound like if there are certain tweaks to the frequency response. Number two, when you've spent your hard earned money on a gear that you hope would meet your expectations, but it does not. And I know it sucks. We've all been there. That's the brutality of this hobby. And you can either try to sell that piece of equipment or you could try EQ to see if you could lean closer to your preferred sound. And that is the two scenarios that I personally think where EQ would actually help. It is by no means a solution to the problem, but at least it's a form of assistance. Taking a few gears in my personal collection as an example, the recently released Audio Ehiku. I liked the bass presentation but felt something was missing from the mid-range, so with the power of EQ, I tried pushing a few decibels on the 2.5 to 5k region and reducing the 1.3 kHz region, and suddenly vocal fullness, clarity with that bass presentation sounded so good to my ears, similar to my hi fi Man HE 1000 V2s. And it sounds amazing, do not get me wrong. But I still wished I had a little bit more bass just to cope with the treble. So with the power of EQ, I increased the sub bass and mid bass and it transformed the HE 1000 V2 into a V-shaped headphone and I'm just addicted to it. Of course, if you do not know what to raise or reduce, this is where squeak.link is a very powerful website where your favorite reviewers have spent so much of their time grafting IEMs and headphones for your information. So yeah, send them your love because it's their time for your knowledge. I'm even trying to measure gears myself and I'm struggling, but that's another day, another video. So looking at this graph generously provided by HBB himself, the Maestro SE. So I personally wished it had a little bit more treble extension. So once again, with the power of EQ, I raised a few regions past the 10 kHz region and brought the 1.5 to 2K up a few decibels and the sound opened up a bit more and details were a lot sharper, which personally for me took an already amazing IEM a step further, especially if you like more resolution in the treble regions. And that is the power of EQ because it allows you to personally tune your current gear towards your preferred sound with minor adjustments here and there. And best of all, it's either free or it would cost you a lot less than having to purchase another gear hoping that it suits your needs. However, there are a few things to understand. Number one, not all IEMs or headphones can be EQ'd. Pushing these frequencies too far in may cause distortion on some of your gears. So if you do test this software out, I recommend trying a few decibels at a time. Number two, it would be a lot easier to EQ the sound if you get something that is closer to your preferred tuning to begin with. If you're getting something like the Sound Note Zero and hoping to EQ it to have Maestro as its sub bass, please come back to earth because you're never going to get there unless distortion is the sound you sleep with at night. EQ isn't to completely change, it is to simply tweak. Number three, applying EQ does not change the nature of the driver. If you're hoping to have a balanced armature sound like a dynamic driver for bass with EQ, chances are you're going to be quite disappointed. So if you're at this point and you're still curious, you might be thinking, okay, fine. Even if I'm curious, how do I even start? There are plenty of EQ softwares available, but for Windows, this is the one I found, which is PEACE, which stands for for Peter's Equalizer APO Configuration Extension, aka Peace. 
I know, cool name to begin with. So this will be the software I'll be talking about. Thank you Peter Verbeek for this amazing gift to the audio community. I'm sorry if I butchered your name. So you will need to download two applications into your computer to get it to work. The Equalizer APO which should be installed first, then the Peace Equalizer software. There's further instructions in this website on how or what steps to take to install which I'll leave in the description down below. Once you have everything installed and you've rebooted your computer and arrived at this screen, I know you're excited but just do a couple more things first. The the next step would be to ensure your devices have the Equalizer APO configuration installed. Click this area and you'll have a few items listed in your system. If you select the device that does not have the APO installed, it'll pop this screen up where it'll show which devices you have installed or not. As you can see, for my high performance EF400, I already have this APO installed, but not on the Nano Audio 1, which is my Moon Drop Dawn. So take the box of the device you want to install the APO on and click OK and you have to reboot your computer every time you install the APO on it. If you do not take this step, most likely you'd hear no changes. Once it's all rebooted and you've come back to the screen again, select your device which I've selected the Hi-Fi Man EF400. Now you can start playing around. Turning this button here would turn on and off the equalizer so it helps with differentiating the changes in the sound. The easiest change would be in the bass area if you want to know whether the software is working or not. Just increase or decrease to see if it affected the base. You can select this button here to see what changes you've made to the frequency response. There are a few presets already available for you. Once you've done your tweak, simply save this as your profile so you can constantly change between each set profile that you have and from here on out, it's pretty much your playground to play with. I know this may seem like a lot at first, but just like everything in life, once you are brave enough to try it once or twice, you'd probably get the hang of it after the next few attempts. You'll be like successfully cutting an umbrella for that challenge in Squid Games. Only difference is that if you fail, you won't get shot in the head. Of course, whatever I'm covering is simply scratching the surface of what EQ can do. And there are plenty of tutorial videos diving in deeper into this software. And you can check out either DMS's videos or headphones.com or even Hobby Talk to have a further understanding on how sound changes when you're adding or subtracting certain frequencies. I'll leave a few links in the description down below if you're interested in checking them out. And with that all said, that concludes my very basic introduction to EQ. And I hope some of you may have found this somewhat informative. Do let me know your own personal experiences with EQ. Has it helped you or made things worse? Or what is your favorite EQ setting and on which gear? Share it with me in the comment section down below. And with that all said, thank you all very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, do consider hitting the like and subscribe button. I truly appreciate each and every one of your support. And until the next experience, take care and happy listening.